Well, hello there, Internet. To my left is Nolan. And to my right is Niall. And you're watching the Readiness Report. So, you might remember from uh, our previous episode. Was it our previous episode? A previous episode, anyway. I don't remember. Um, that we brought you, that we were talking about the comeback of almost Necromunda. Well, now we're talking about the comeback of actual Necromunda. Actual Necromunda. <laughs> yes. Uh, Necrom Fantastic. Necromunda, Necromunda is back. Necromunda Underhive is what the new game is called. Um, and it is, it's not. Quite the same rules. Shadow War Armageddon, as you might recall, um, is almost word for word in a lot of places. Almost exactly the same rules as the Necromunda you might be familiar with. Yep. From uh, mid '90s. So, uh, Necromunda Underhive. It, um, man, it feels like Necromunda though. The rules are a it little does. different, but it it captures the feel of uh, gang warfare in the Underhive very well. Uh, yes, it's very brutal. Uh, a lot of the rules. Um, are, will be very familiar if you played Necromunda before, yep. and then there's still there's other things that are quite a bit different as well. Yep. So there's still pinning, um, you know, or going going prone if you're shot and hit. Um, there's still being stunned and having to make injury rolls to flip back over things like that. That's all still in there, but uh, the game does take a bit from Warhammer Forty Thousand Eighth Edition, uh, and as far as um, there's no to wound chart, it's a matter of are you equal strength and toughness is one higher than the other is one double than the other determines what the dice roll needs to be uh no ballistics chart it's you yep. just have a a number you have to beat yep uh, same again. thing with the weapon skill it's just the a number skill. you have to beat uh so that's not a bad thing anyone who's been playing eighth edition yeah it's actually worked out will, pretty well we'll tell you that it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. uh and now we will say though um this this box is played on cardboard tiles. Yep. So, um, and I mean, they're legitimate cardboard tile, tiles. They're uh, like, you know, what you would play, a, what a board game would come on. They're not like flimsy or anything. Uh, you do measure like normal. These squares are not yes. like movement indicators in it by yeah. any means. It is not grid based. That's just an aesthetic. Now, the three, the rules for playing Necromunda the classic way with 3D terrain and through spires through and spires like and you know up and down ladders and all that that is coming that will come with the release of the game which is black friday not it wouldn't be my first choice to release a a game such as this on but that's what GW went with so it does release on black friday the day after thanksgiving and um when that launches is when we will have the rules for doing the 3D terrain battles, doing campaigns so you can level up your gang members and things like that. All of that will be encompassed in a book called Gang War. Uh, right now, the uh, the core rule book that comes in the box, uh, no word yet on whether that's going to be released as a separate thing yet. They for, did it with Shadow War we, Armageddon. Right. For all we know, the the main like actual rules that are in there might be part of the Gang War book, for all we know. We don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, don't don't get upset yet until we know anything for sure. Uh, right now, there are only rules for playing uh, Escher and Goliath. Yep. Two iconic gangs. One's backwards. Two iconic gangs um, from last game. Escher is probably... If there is a poster child gang or Necromunda, it's Escher. Right. And Goliath was chosen because they have a rivalry with Escher and they play completely differently. They're so completely different. So it makes sense to have them both in so you get a feel for each type of gameplay. Right. Uh, this actually is not everything. There are five more. There are ten. It comes with ten Eschers and ten Goliaths. So there's four more Goliaths that aren't out there. Yeah, there's four more Goliaths. They're still so being built. <laughs> that have not been built yet. But six is the size of gang that you play um, Mission 1, the tunnel... Or tunnel skirmish or whatever it's Something called. Something like that, yeah. Um, it, it'll show up on the bottom of the screen here. I just made more work for you by doing that. Don't say things like that. Uh, yeah, so the name of the mission will show up down here. and uh, but that So that's the mission we played, uh, which is just the generic 
deploy on each side of the table and kill each other mission. Yep. Um, do we want to go over how that went real quick? It went very poorly for Niall, who was playing Goliath. It was rough. Uh, so Goliath, as I'm sure you could imagine, are dependent on getting in close, making charges, connecting, and just cutting their enemies in half lengthways because they're capable of that with axes and with axes stuff. and and hammers smashing people with hammers and whatnot so leaving them into you know gooey paste right so to every every warrior has when they activate they have two actions so you can move twice you can move and shoot you can shoot then move you can spend both your actions to charge however which is the best way to get into close combat. Um, not, not to say you can't just walk into close combat. No. But um, when it takes an action to stand up, it's very problematic for the gang that is dependent on getting into melee combat when... Uh, they don't have an action. They, don't have, they, they take an action to stand up. They can only move four inches and they can't charge. Uh, and Escher are better at shooting. And it, I mean, it's not just the stat line because the only the uh, champions and the leader of the Escher gang are any better at with ballistic skill than um, the Goliath. They're they're pretty much four to hit for all the basic troops. What would have been Juves in the old Necromunda? Right, I think they're. I don't think they're called that in this. Just like just gangers. Just gangers, I think is yeah. what they're calling them. But anyway, so it's not a matter of. It's not even so much a matter of it's easy to hit, but, like, the last gun has a very long range for this game. I mean, it's it's a 24-inch 24 24 range, but that is a long range for this game, at least compared to what a lot of the other weapons are. Uh, the auto gun is an 18-inch. Yes. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, the shotguns only go out to... 12? I don't know. We got the unit cards here. It's pretty long, though, uh, for a shotgun, I think. Yeah, so Stubbers, which are the uh, main pistol for the uh, Goliath, they go out to 12. But here's the the, yeah. the Eschers all have ranged weapons. Yep. The Goliaths don't all have ranged weapons. They don't, and um, the ranged weapons for the Escher tend to outrange the ranged weapons for the Goliath. But the, the point is, every time you're hit with a, we with a ranged weapon, you are knocked down. Yep. No matter what. Whether it damages or not, it doesn't matter. Once you're hit, you're knocked down. So your next turn, you take an action to stand up. Now you only have four inches of movement because you're Goliath and you're slow. And you cannot do the charge to get the extra movement bonus. So it makes it harder to get into close combat with the Goliaths as a result. Um, now, to be fair, my dice weren't helping the situation any. But I really didn't have that many chances... Like I, my dice were rolling poorly, but I did not have that many chances to kill you, just because I wasn't getting the shots. No, and I only I only closed into melee range once. Um, now on my side, it I was hitting you pretty often. I wasn't really hurting you that much. No, but uh, just knocking me toughness. down. It yeah, was... it, it kept you at bay long enough for me to eventually, yeah, uh, do some damage. But uh, I wasn't penetrating your, uh, your right. defenses and. After discussing with uh, some people about this, uh, it seems pretty par for the course uh, for Goliath uh, that this kind of thing happens. Way, way, way back in the day when we played a bit of Necromunda, neither of us played Goliath, so we didn't really have much experience with the gangs. No. Um, now, uh, another thing that's, that stands out to me as different is uh, you activate one, yeah. one figure at a time. So if I have initiative... I activate one figure, and then my opponent activates one, and then I activate one, and back and forth until everyone's been activated. So that's different. Um, Which I actually like. I, I do. It, it allows you to react, I think, better mm -hmm. uh, in real time. So, you know, if I'm reacting to something that my opponent does, my opponent can then instantly react to that reaction right. in their turn if, it, you know, if someone's available to do so. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, the base game plays in what they refer to as the Underhive, which is the Labyrinthian Tunnels, below the Hive proper. Uh, so, the as a result, the boards are... Holding it up for that camera. Boards are, as you can see, tunnels. Um, the black void areas are walls that you cannot travel through. 
or see through or, or see through or anything like that. Uh, there are potentially ducts between or through the walls that you can cr uh, take both actions to crawl through, or you can shoot through if someone's standing immediately next to it on the other side. So, uh, the game play the game as it's in the box doesn't play as you might remember from the old Necromunda or for Shadow War Armageddon for that matter. Right. But it's still fun. Uh, we're still planning to incorporate the tunnel battles into our campaign that we're going to run when, I mean, Necromunda, of course, we're going to run a campaign when right. this comes out. So it, we're still planning to incorporate some of the tunnel battles into our Necromunda campaign. Yeah. And then it, it comes with all this terrain for use with the uh, the Underhive yep. tiles, uh, doors, doors, and barriers, barriers and... Uh, Sort of thing. Crates um, and terminals and things like that as well. Yes. It even has a uh, tentacle coming out of a uh, sewer, like a manhole. Yeah, and some kind of like uh, chaos skull thing. Those, know. we're we're guessing, are, um, t are scenario specific things. Yeah, I don't really know what that's all about, but there it is. Yep, there it is. Uh, and then doors. Yep. Big doors and small doors. Yes. Uh, the gangs all come with molded bases, though, which is cool. Yeah, they look like um, deck plating. Yeah, they those come standard in the box, and they also come standard in the individual gang boxes that we'll also be releasing uh, when the rest of the game, or when the main game releases. That'll be ten fighters in each of those gang boxes, which are the same sprues that came in the main box. All right. Now, the... Uh... The sprues have a lot of options. You from the two sprues, it's two identical sprues for each gang. You can build ten figures off of them, and uh, so there's two of every weapon combination option. Uh, so you really have, and then I don't know how many, like twice as many heads as you need. And yep, and there's, there's options for. I mean, the heads for the Goliath are three pieces. Two. Two pieces. So you can you know change up like hairstyles and faces it's, and stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's a hair piece. It's a hair piece and the rest of the head. Same thing for the Escher. So you can you there's can, a hair piece and then the rest of the head. Yeah, so you can make your gang different than everyone else's that's out. Plus there. other bits um, for the glass. There's extra armor pieces, armor plates. Um, there's knives, knives pistols, and grenades like and uh, different bits you can put on them. There's lot. There's a lot of bits. Uh, they're very uh, customizable. Very satisfying. Uh, amount of bits. Yeah, there, there's a lot there, and they're they look really great. They're very nice sculpts, all dynamic poses mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, the contents of the box. Uh, you have orange templates, which are same templates that they've been putting in their stuff for ages. That went away with Eighth Edition, but are still in this. Apparently, the specialty games division like went in and took all the remaining templates. And were like, well, we'll use them. Yeah. Uh, so the, it comes with a bunch, a whole bunch of uh, the terrain tiles. And they're the double-sided. They're all double-sided, so you get um, quite the mixture of stuff there. Um, like I said, all the doors and barriers and crates and stuff, the miniatures, obviously. The dice, which um, I would like to point out that these are the first Games Workshop dice I've ever seen where the symbol on them is the six and not the one. Good job, Games Workshop. Finally, uh, catching on to that, that ev that's what everyone wants. There are two sets of dice. Yes, there's a set for each gang. Um, so there's three D regular D6. There's a couple of critical injury dice. Or there's an ammo die, which is what you roll to find out um, if you run out of ammo, or if it's a rapid fire weapon, how many shots are fired. And there's a scatter die. And there's a scatter die for each side. Plus uh, a rule book. Uh, tactics cards. Right. Which uh, scenarios um, will allow you to draw tactics cards, and they're just cards that you can use that let you do something special. Yeah, um, it, might, it might give you like an extra charge distance and attack. I in our the game we played, I had one that. Um, but I, you do you recon move at the beginning? Yeah, I, it's a it's an Escher. Um, Escher specific tactic. Escher specific one that allows me to uh, move up to half my gang. They can make a free move at the beginning of the game, uh, and then there are. There are gang cards. So there's a card for each gang member mm -hmm. that comes in the box. Uh, that comes as, as recommended to be built. Yeah. The, so if you follow the instructions on how they built them, 
those are the pre-made gangers. You don't have to follow those instructions. You can equip them however you want. Right. Uh, but those are the ones that they they uh, have. And so they have the two pre-built gangs plus a bunch of blank cards for you to make your own. Right, which are unfortunately not, like, meant to be wet erased or anything like that. Once you've written on them, that's it. So there will be more um, card packs coming out when the game launches that include the gang tactics cards, the gang... The pre-made gang stack cards and more of the blank cards. So if you need more of the blank cards, you're gonna have a stack of other cards to throw away, I guess. Uh, maybe one day we'll get like a stack of blank cards as a purchasable thing. We'll see. Uh, in addition, there's the tokens necessary for play that have the critical injury, the activation, uh, the no ammo tokens, things like that. A um, what we're guessing are melta trap. Tokens or something. It looks like the floor's been melted through. Yeah, so. uh, a couple of different or a couple um, fire arc templates for one one for each size because the Goliath are in larger bases than the Escher, uh, and then a couple of um, quick reference quick reference cards for each player, one for each player, and a the twelve inch see through plastic ruler that GW's been. Having yes, a standard replacement for the good old red stick. I miss the red sticks. I do. They made a nice swish sound when you swatted someone with mm -hmm. them. And people left, made a, a left, nice ouch sound when you swatted you them. Yeah, left big old welts right across your friend's back. Uh, yep. So yeah, that's that's, that's 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 a part of playing games. That that is uh, when you're yeah when you start playing in your teens. That's a definite average part of <laughs> playing games. But it anyway. Uh, yeah, so that, that's Necromunda Underhive. Uh, game's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Yeah, it, uh, like I said, it, if you're familiar with Necromunda, uh, it plays a little bit differently, but it's still the same. The Got spirit of it is still there. Yep. It still feels like Necromunda. Yes. It's not drastically different. Uh, a lot of the same stuff. And then a little new things, little things have tweaked yep. and changed. And um, I... I think for the better, if not, definitely not for the worse. Right. And so uh, GW has mentioned that they want to do all the gangs eventually for this game. We should yeah. be getting more in January is what I had heard. Um, hope I'm hoping for Spires in the next uh, wave. That'd be super cool. Games work out. Get, get on the Spires. And um, they, as from also from what I've heard is that they want this to be their flagship um, specialty yeah. games division game. What that means is a game that they plan to support long term, which I know that is a concern for a lot of players. Um, what is the lifespan of this game? How long will Games Workshop continue to support it? So they plan to support it, it maybe not indefinitely, but they don't have a planned date for its removal anyway. Right. Now that sort of thing is always a catch-22 to me because people... If it's not going to be supported very long, they don't want to buy into it. But if nobody's buying into it, they're not going to support it. Right. Uh, but I would say definitely buy into this. Necromunda yep. was always fun, and it's always been a fan favorite. People have always been calling for Necromunda to come back for years. I mean, personally, I've been calling for more time to come back for years. But maybe we'll get there one day. If this well, does well, maybe we'll get more time. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so... Definitely check it out. Um, a lot of game if game stores ordered enough preview copy or enough pre-ordered enough copies of the base set, um, your friendly local game store should have uh, rental copies or not rental um, demo copies of Necromunda Underhive. Uh, I know we here at Little Shop of Magic we got our demo copy. That's what this is. We're gonna be demoing it um, in the coming weeks before release and then running a league after release. So. Go, go to your local game store. Go to our local game store if you're in Vegas and check it out. Uh, the game is a lot of fun. I'm very excited to play this game. Yes, I am. I've been excited since they announced it. And, and this has just uh, made well, me more excited. He's been reading the, the White Dwarf article, the full spread on it. And he's just like been coming back to me he's like every page i've been reading i'm more excited about this game i i was i've always liked necromunda and yeah. it's back and i'm very very happy yep and it, i mean to be fair we were 
honestly pretty satisfied with just uh, Shadow War Armageddon. Yeah, I mean, Shadow War Armageddon came out. We're like, well, it's not called Necromunda, but it's Necromunda. So we were... We we ran a long league for that. Yeah, too. they ran they ran like six or eight weeks. We ran a while. Um, uh, we were and we we're playing several days a week. We were, yeah. So we were we'll so we'll, this. we'll be playing this quite a bit as well. Uh, we will be obviously playing it more when we have more gangs to choose from. Yeah. Uh, right now, only having two gangs is a little. It's a, a little limiting. A little limiting. Um. That's what it is. Uh, there were there there are more gangs coming though. Yeah. Spirers. Uh I'm fine with the Eshers, that's <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to play anyway. Right. So I'm 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 cool with that, but uh I don't know anybody who wants to play Goliaths offhand. Yeah. There's people out there, but I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I mean, someone's going to have to, though. Although we're not getting I mean, do we want on a league with just nothing but Eshers? Eshers just like this. It's an internal Eshers. strife in the Escher house. But anyway, so yeah, check it out. Um, we're super excited about this. Uh, rumor is the next specialty game coming from down the pipe from Games Workshop is uh, Battlefleet Armageddon. Is that or Adeptus Titanicus? I don't know. One of them, I think. I think they. I think both of them got leaked. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, game specialty games division seems popular again. I don't know if it's just a nostalgia thing or what, but I hope it keeps going. I do too. I've always uh, always been a fan of their specialty games. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's there aren't any that I've played that I haven't liked. Uh, I haven't played them all though. I will admit that. <laughs> right. So uh, go buy yeah. Narcomunda. Yeah, uh, it comes when out go- in a couple weeks. I don't know when this video is getting posted. Yeah, as soon as I can. At least a week and a half away. The day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving. So. That's the fourth Thursday for non Americans. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh cool. So thanks for watching. And we'll be back whenever something else cool that comes up. Maybe we'll, we'll probably do a video on Legion. I don't know. See what comes up. So bye. Bye. So everyone in the Escher house looks like they're straight off the cover of Heavy Metal magazine. Between the hair and the large personality they got going on it's like for a game made in the 90s they all sure look like they're from the 80s